Hello. In this video, I will be discussing how we can optimize the resolution of uh, raster grids, for example, grids that we make in digital elevation models or the grid for a digital terrain model. I'll begin by discussing the best case scenario. And in this scenario, best case scenario, the resolution is equal to one divided by the square root of the point density of the LIDAR data set. So let's look at what this means. So here we have this meter dimension. And in this meter dimension, we have four points that are uh, for LIDAR returns. And those are shown in blue. And in this case, we can make a uh, 0.5 meter or 50 centimeter digital uh, elevation model. And we can calculate that by resolution is equal to one divided by the square root of the point density. Point density is that we have these four points per meter squared. So we can make, uh, in the best case scenario, a 0 0.5 meter digital elevation model. And conceptually, we can also look at this and see that in this meter dimension, we have these four returns from the uh, LIDAR instrument. And if we were to divide this area into four, then we would get these four um, grid cells, each with 0 0.5 meters by 0 0.5 meters. So in summary, when we have uh, these four points per square meter, really the best we could do is a DEM with a 0 0.5 meter resolution. And so here are some other examples of the relationship between point density and the ideal raster resolution. Uh, if we have uh, one point per square meter, we can have a raster resolution of one meter. If we have four points per square meter, we can have 0 0.5 meter resolution. And again, that is this example that I discussed here. If we have 25 points per square meter, then the best raster resolution is going to be 0 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters. So how can we look up the point resolution of different LIDAR data sets? So we can do that in open topography, looking at the data page. And this is an example of the uh, Arizona Pima County data set. And this is part of the USGS 3D elevation project data. And uh, Pima County is covers Tucson in Southern Arizona. And if we look here, we can see that the data set has a point density of 20.61 points per square meter. And this is the average point density of the entire data set. So locally, the point density can be higher or lower. And it's important to remember that this includes all classifications. So this is going to be ground, unclassified, as well as uh, other classifications. So in the best case scenario, this data set is roughly 20 points per square meter. And so we can grid it at a resolution of 0 0.24 meters. And again, this is the best case scenario for making a digital elevation model using all point classifications. Say we want to though make a digital terrain model. So a digital terrain model is made using ground points only. Um, and so for the area of this data set that I selected, the area has about 102 million points. And that's for the whole uh, point cloud data set. If we select ground points only, that uh, area goes from 102 million to roughly 29 million. And so it's first important to appreciate that this is a massive decrease in the number of points that we have to make this digital terrain model. And so therefore we should expect the resolution or the resolution size of that pixel to be bigger. And so roughly 25% of the points are ground points. And so that means with uh, about five points per square meter, we can make a roughly five, 0 0.5 meter or 50 centimeter digital terrain model. Um, so now we're going to look at that point cloud data set and just see what it looks like. It's always, it's always useful when we're making these digital elevation models to look at 
the point cloud data set, um, as this can help us distinguish if we're in a good case or a less good case. And so again, this is still looking at this good case of uh, Pima County in Arizona, where on the left, you see the full uh, point cloud. And then on the right, I've zoomed in and I'm showing only ground classified points. And we see that there are some holes or less dense areas. And this is very likely where there was vegetation um, that I've removed by selecting ground points only. But so these areas with the vegetation, fairly small. And outside of those areas, we have uh, a fairly consistent spacing of the points. And this will make a little bit more sense when I show you less good examples later. And so we can take this data set from Pima County and make uh, raster data sets. The left shows a topographic hillshade from a 0 0.24 meter digital elevation model. And overall, this data set looks good. We don't see any large errors. And we do get a very good sense of the landscape and vegetation. The right shows a 0 0.25 meter digital terrain model. This represents the elevation with the, yeah, the elevation with the vegetation removed. And again, this still looks quite good. Uh, where it looks like a natural landscape. We see different fluvial patterns probably, and probably some bedrock. Um, but again, there's no large errors in this that jump out at me. So I'm now going to discuss two examples with less good scenarios. So this first issue is looking at uneven uh, local point density. And here we're looking at a, a USGS 3 depth data set in the Kaibab of Northern Arizona. Both of these data sets are looking at ground points only. Uh, in this case, the full data set has about 15 points per square meter, and the ground points have roughly seven points per square meter. So on the left, we can see that those holes represent areas where there were uh, large pine trees, and so we have no LIDAR returns from under those pine trees. And then we can zoom in, shown on the right. We do see those holes where the pine trees are. But we also see that it looks like there's these uh, stripes that represent the details of the LIDAR data set collection. Um, but then, and there's very dense um, or close point spacing along those stripes but then further spacing off of those stripes. And so very locally here, we have an uneven spacing of the LIDAR returns. So this is an example where we probably can't make a high quality digital elevation model at the resolution suggested by the point cloud density. And so let's try that. So here on the left is a, a 0 0.4 meter digital terrain model. And this is the best resolution that you could expect to make just using the ground classified points. And if you look, there's these uh, roughly vertical, quite prominent striping artifacts. And this uh, is representative of that uneven uh, spacing between the points that we looked at on the last slide. And this can cause subsequent later issues, such as uh, if you're looking to identify linear features, such as faults or roads, if these linear features have that same orientation as the striping, they can make it challenging to identify and map those linear features. We also can have issues when we're looking at doing topographic differencing, um, especially in cases where we're looking at fairly small uh, actual change signals. And these errors can be often of a similar size to those errors. Um, and then on the right shows a one meter digital terrain model. So this is not the sort of the ideal resolution. It is in fact lower. And we do see that these uh, striping artifacts are significantly mitigated. Um, and so overall this shows an approach for uh, getting rid of these striping artifacts, which is to grid at a lower resolution. You can optimize that resolution just fairly iteratively by looking at the at how those striping artifacts decrease with changes in 
or with the resolution. And here is the uh, second example. And in this case, uh, this issue represents cases where you have uh, fewer returns under thick vegetation. So here we're looking at the Christina River Critical Zone Observatory, which is in southeastern Pennsylvania. This data set was collected in July during leaf on conditions. And the full point cloud has roughly 11 points per square meter. All the ground points have uh, roughly four points per square meter. The left shows the uh, full point cloud with all the classifications. And uh, we can see that there are uh, many returns that represent vegetation. Um, and on the right, we're looking at only the ground classified points. And at this scale, we can see that there are fewer returns associated with the rivers and in some areas with more vegetation. If we zoom in, this uh, issue becomes even more prominent, where again, on the left, we are seeing the full point cloud, and on the right shows ground classified points only. We do see uh, quite substantial holes in the data set where there are no ground returns due to the uh, thick vegetation. So this is looking at the uh, topographic rasters made from those data sets on the left shows the full DEM, um, where we see the presence of this quite significant vegetation. And on the right shows the digital terrain model, uh, where we do see uh, some tinning errors here, where we see this quite abrupt and unnatural shape to the topography. Um, and then there are some areas under thick vegetation where the point cloud uh, just looks either smoother, um, yeah, smoother or sometimes a little bit rougher. And this is because that uh, there are relatively few ground return points. And so the true resolution that we of those areas under the vegetation is often much lower. And in this case, you can grid the point cloud using a larger pixel size. Um, and or you can also just remember while you're doing the analysis that the uh, resolution of your data set under thick vegetation is in fact lower. All right, thank you. This concludes our video on selecting the best resolution of your raster data set.